and welcome back to Subnautica. This is episode six. Last time we were going to get rescued and then big old gun, big old alien gun said no, uh, blew up the sunbeam. Um, we got a beautiful light show and now we find ourselves in this area um, where I suppose if we want to get off of this planet, we should probably figure out how to disable this thing, right? So we've put a purple tablet in the force field control and opened it up. And I guess that we should do this while we're here. You know, we've got a radio message. Um, we'll see how we go when we, when we head back, when we head back into sort of our safety of our base and habitat and everything, we will be exploring the Aurora more as well, because we need to figure out what's going on there and uh, fix that place up. Yeah, so we'll see how we go. But we've got a couple of radio messages waiting for us because this we've been... composed of a metal alloy with unprecedented integrity. No matches found in database performing structural analysis. Okay. Um... We've got... Losing my train of thought there when that came up. Um, losing my train of thought. What was I What was I just thinking about? God damn. This is the classic thing. Like, I had a thought, and then the game spoke to me, and I was like, huh? Totally forgot what was going on. Um, we haven't been that way uh, in a while, because we've been doing the whole sunbeam thing. I think we, we timed it quite well, exploring the Aurora, until, you know, the countdown was pretty... Uh, was pretty close so we maximized our efficiency instead of like just coming here and waiting um god this is really strange in here though it's so alien um i love that we're just like strolling on in here just being like well i hope there's no uh traps or sentries or defenses i'm just gonna get killed for being like a weird sort of presence in this place considering it's i guess you could assume it's an orbital defense uh, system. It might recognize that I am foreign material and want to destroy me. Data terminal. Unknown language. Attempting translation. Cool. Unknown language. Okay. Alien data terminal. Discovered inside an alien facility, it was not possible to translate any useful information. However, scans have returned some information on the device itself. It is likely a solid state computer, although there is no clear way to interface with it. On approach, it began producing a low frequency radio wave containing complex but recognizable data patterns. It is likely the alien species which designed this technology evolved or genetically selected sensory apparatus to hear and understand the information being broadcast by the device and to communicate back. The mental processing power required to perform this kind of telepathy would imply the designers were considerably more psychologically developed than the common human. Very cool. Okay. Too advanced for our tiny pea brains. I always forget that I can, like, see my body. So weird. Uh, yeah, what is this? What is this cube? Pick up an ion cube. Ion cube. Scan it. This green mineral substance has no entry on the periodic table and an unprecedented ability to store huge amounts of ionic energy within it. Likely grown artificially, cubic appearance suggests it has been cut from a larger deposit. Each cube contains the equivalent ionic energy of five kilotons of TNT. Under the right conditions, the energy could be released in a controlled manner. Likely used as batteries, but will require a substantial power source to be recharged. So a valuable energy source. Very cool. Like we would just like hold on to it like that. How big is it in our inventory? It's small. High capacity alien energy source. Cool. Let's just remove the energy source from this place and just hope for the best. Oh, 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 yeah, I just made the environment disappear. You want to see a magic trick? 
and make the environment disappear. I thought I could investigate what that is. The patterns on the walls cannot ascertain whether their purpose is aesthetic or functional. Further data required. Okay. Okay, it doesn't look like this is unique on the walls. But if you jump into the walls... Nope, if you jump into that one specific wall, it makes things go weird. Cool. We're just picking up these power cubes. God, this place is weird. Unknown language. Attempting translation. Get ahead of myself there. There we go. Enforcement platform schematic. This data set appears to be a multi-dimensional schematic of some kind. By mapping the pattern to three-dimensional space, it is possible to gather a basic understanding of this facility's internal workings. Construction material. The facility's unknown construction material is identified as an ultra-hard, non-reactive metal amalgam synthesized from off-world materials. There is no indication that it can be damaged or destroyed by available means. Power. The schematic indicates the facility was to be powered by a separate, self-sustaining power plant located elsewhere on the planet. The location is not listed, but there is evidence that the design is intended to harness the planet's natural thermal energy. So I think this is what's happened, because when we went underwater, you could see all of this stuff going down, and it's weird down there, and it's scary because there's just so much stuff, and it's the unknown. So as much as I want to explore it, I feel like it's going to take a little while to take this area apart, which is exciting. Layout. The facility consists of the upper engineering section where the schematic was found and the control room, which is accessed via a security sealed elevator shaft or a separate underwater moon pool. Oh, there's an underwater moon pool. Okay. The control room in the lower section houses the only known way to interface with the facility. However, the schematic does not detail the operational procedure or installed security measures. That's what I was saying, the security measures. I'm like, they gotta need like, uh, they gonna need, am I gonna get like, you know, trip any alarms? Your best probability of interfacing with this facility is achieved by accessing the control room in the lower section. Whoa. I just got like sucked into it. I was trying to look over the edge. Whoa. So this is the moon pool at the bottom that it was talking about. Okay, 137 meters below sea level. There's a force field control. Oh, look at this place. Oh, it's closed. Oh, no, hang on. I can go, I think I can enter through there. How exciting. How exciting. Cool. Let's put a, let's put a pin in that. Go down this way. This is awesome. What is that over there? So many cool things. And by so many, I mean not many. But it's still cool. Oh. Alien rifle. An alien rifle. That's exciting. Strong resemblance to human weaponry in form, this device must have been designed with a humanoid user in mind. Whether the aliens that built the structure were themselves humanoid or otherwise employed the use of humanoids is unclear. What is clear is that they considered defending this facility a necessary precaution. There is no obvious way to remove the rifle from the case. Bop it. Smack it. Cut it open. Hiya! <coughs> Alright, never mind then. Give me all of these babies though. Oh, that's just draw distance. I was like, oh, am I activating something? Ooh, okay. We can go up or we can go. Why does this look like a portal? 
Alien Arch. It's a it's a stargate. The structure's intended purpose is unclear. Ceremonial or religious role, industrial applications, or advanced transportation network. That's what I was thinking. Because it's such a cliche sci-fi staple. Okay. I'm looking for like things that I could like potentially interact with. Um, I don't think there's a crouch in this game because you're mostly underwater. Yep. Mmm. Random archway. What if you, um... What if you... Oh, actually. Nope, I can't bind these to a quick slot. Oh, actually. Hang on. Here? No. Alright, I'm like looking for like sockets or something and I'm like maybe you could put like the cubes in there. Hmm. Okay. <coughs> Let's go up instead. Doesn't look like we've got any stamina for our sprinting, which is cool. It's just like food and water, which is the normal stuff. We'll eat that nutrient block soon as well. Keep us nice and fed. That was a good find, that nutrient block. ourselves another purple tablet. We got two of those. It looks like it's the same symbol every time. I was wondering when they were talking about the symbol if we were going to have different ones for different purposes. That could still be a possibility. Ooh, there's a force field. Alien device. That's just called a doomsday device. Okay. Scans indicate this device contains enough potential energy to destroy the entire planet, along with most of the solar system. Fortunately, it has malfunctioned. Okay. Just casually. Malfunctioning doomsday device. Did they attempt to... Whoever was here before attempt to destroy the planet once and it just didn't work? Scans it's wild. The facility's control room lies beyond this doorway. Uh, yeah. Get on there. I love how just the mystery of this game continues to grow. You're just like, what the hell? Oh. Oh. Energy core. We shut this bad boy down. This energy device, sorry, no, this device houses energy equivalent to a hundred MT nuclear detonation, which can be channeled through the facility and directed at vessels overhead. There it is. Or or bent around the planet's gravitational pull to strike targets in orbit. Power is routed via the attached terminal, allowing the device to be deactivated if necessary. It is currently operating without parameters, suggesting it will target any ship within range. Damn. So I think that that means we could have saved if we were fast enough. Dude, if we just came here and fucked around on the... You know what? This is really interesting because we fucked around for the whole countdown, went through the Aurora and stuff, which is very rewarding and good to do. And then we came here with a short amount of time left. Uh, I timed it pretty well. But if we came here first and just had all that time to kill, we'd have been like, oh, let's go in here. We would have been able to turn this off and prevent the the uh, the goddamn ship from getting destroyed. So because we were like, oh, I'm gonna do do stuff on the planet, uh, the sunbeam got destroyed. Goddamn. Whoa. Oh. The control panel is broadcasting a message. Translation reads, Warning, infected individuals may not disable the weapon. This planet is under quarantine. 
Oh. Oh, fuck. I'm infected. Translating background broadcast. Oh shit. Dude. Intercepted background data regarding further alien facilities elsewhere on the planet. Oh, this is so cool. Okay. Dude. All right. So the planet is under quarantine. Disease research facility. Depth 800 meters. Okay. I'm starting to see the like trajectory of this game. We need to upgrade our stuff so we can go deep underwater. The fact that we have encountered terrifying things like two to 300 meters down and there's stuff that's like triple to quadruple the distance down. Uh, oh, oh God. Um, we have to upgrade our shit to get all the way down to cure ourselves of an infection while also fixing the Aurora to... Uh, and then we like to, you know, because the infection is just getting pushed out there. Uh, we then have to cure ourselves. We then have to disable this thing. So we then can fix the long range communications on the Aurora. So then we can get rescued. Or maybe we have to build our own goddamn ship and get the hell out of here. This is cool. I really like this. And like, I'm very new to the survival genre. And I've been, I've been trying my best, right? So there's a couple of things that just aren't very natural to me, but there's many things that I'm just like, this is so goddamn exciting to like learn and figure out. And it's cool to like be so in control of this because it feels so open and freeing that it's like you have a structure of what you need to do and there's like a story there, but like you get to make your own story. And I think that's very exciting. Uh, that's very, very cool. I wish that the music wasn't so buggy in this game because it was just playing a cool track in the background and it just like kind of stops. Well, so it's kind of a, kind of a shame. Um, I wish that the music was a little more constant in this game sometimes as well. All right. 800 meters down, disease research facility. Cave system with extensive fossil records southwest of the enforcement platform. I'm assuming that we are the enforcement platform. Um, live specimen study objective synthesis of antidote antidote goddamn can I read please for highly infectious bacterium designated Kara. okay so if we just go southwest of the enforcement platform for 800 meters easy we'll just swim there be fine uh, thermal power facility 1200 meters down inside of an extensive natural rock formation in an area of intense volcanic activity Generate energy for all local facilities. That is amazing. Sanctuary A, Sanctuary B, off-site laboratory, and a primary containment facility. In the event of an outbreak, quarantine procedures will be automatically enforced with immediate effect. The quarantine enforcement platform will target all incoming and outgoing craft to prevent the spread of infection off-world. Wow. Okay. So we wouldn't have been able to turn this off anyway. So we're just kind of screwed regardless. Gotcha. So we would have got down here, been like, no, and then it would have got blown up. Makes sense. Okay. Well, we're coming back here later, aren't we? Jesus. Um, damn. Cool. Um, in that case... All right, we've got cool stuff that we can check out. Let's get out of here. And we now know that there is a moon pool. For us to have like some quicker entry. I don't know why I did that. Ooh. Thought I could get away with, uh, thought I could get away with that. I want that alien rifle, dude. I wonder if it can shoot underwater. Um, do you reckon I... Hmm, where's my Seamoth? It's 109 meters away. You reckon I could... Huh? I'm assuming the elevator works both ways, but I think it would just be... Uh, for, for curiosity's sake, it would be better for us to... Oh, better for us to go this way. Dude, those things sound so cool. They're so fucked up. 
I think it'll be better for us to check this out. Oh, cool. It's like right there. Uh, oh, you know what? I really do think these gates are teleportation travel related gates. There's multiple. If you could activate them, maybe you could tra uh, transport yourself between facilities. That would make a lot of sense to me. All right, saw this purple glow. Uh, let's eat this nutrient block. Music is so cool in this game, dude. We have, I do have the, uh, all the volume stuff maxed out. So I haven't turned any, anything down. But whenever the music hits, I feel like it just needs to be like louder. Right, let's eat that. Reginald. So I guess these are power cables, maybe. The little Dr. Octopus arms. Yeah, this feels like this could be like little teleportation thingies. Oh, it goes down. It do go down. It, it, do, it do go down. God damn. Uh, also... Uh, I can't explain my actions. I think it's primarily from an inventory space concern of not bringing my sea glide with me. But like, I can see how useful it would be for me to have it with me, especially in a situation like this where I can like be faster, have a flashlight, stuff like that. Um, I I do understand that I've been a little bit, uh, just a little bit free balling, you know without my sea glide. You know, we've just been taken in the environment for a nice relaxing swim. But I'm gonna try to take the uh the sea glide with me. Oh. Oh it's just the sun. I was like, what is this light source down the bottom here? We gotta build uh one of the prawn things as well. Alright, let's go. Nope. Into the sea moth. Welcome aboard, Captain. Entering the Mapo One. Alright, well. Oh, god, this thing's like almost busted. Hold on. Let me let me fix this bad boy right up real quick. Repair to the ship. This ship's got me through so many things. Okay, so... Oh god, is... Ah, I'm being attacked by the wizard fish. Um, things that we know that we have to do. We have to check out the proposed Degasi habitat. Whether this is a new one, or the same one that we previously discovered, because we want to check out both anyway, because there was stuff that we missed at the Degasi habitat. Um... Oh man, I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you, when, when we're, when we're underwater and like, you can't see anything, that's when this game is like, that's when the game gets me. And I'm like, you're just venturing through just unknown nothingness. That's when I start to go like, Ooh. you know? Oh yeah, we want to go to the proposed Degasi habitat. Um, we want to go check out Life Pod 12, which is sunk to the ocean bed, which is, uh, 250 meters down. Radiation detected. Efficiency decreased. Yes, well, about that. Radiation, my dear. Uh. New blueprint acquired. 
sounded like an explosion. How does this shit work? Is this not a laser? Okay. It's not a door that I can laser. I've been in here before, but I haven't been able to cut this open. Oh, there we go. Nice. I've, I've been in this exact wreckage before, and I remember this door. A lightweight high capacity tank. Okay. What's going on? Hang on. So we've got a high capacity tank. God. We had a lot of noises. We had a lot of noises taking place right now. Um So an ultra high capacity tank. Lighter build allows for enhanced maneuverability. Uh, with a high capacity tank and a plasteel ingot. Oh, so I guess this is this would make sense that it's like heavier. So we can have one that gives us more oxygen, but is also lighter. battery charger. My inventory is now full. Passing 100 meters. Oxygen efficiency decreased. Ah, oh, hang on. Inventory full. I need to ditch some stuff. Uh, let's drink some water. Oh, I guess it was stuff that I already had. So it's just titanium at the moment. We'll leave these fragments alone. I think we've already got a mobile vehicle bay. Okay, we should get out of here and get to the surface. Radiation. I might just do that. Where is my Seamoth? 30 seconds. Oh, my oxygen will last. Is that getting here? I think those, are those noises coming from the Aurora itself? It's gotta be, right? I think we need to hurry up and try and fix the Aurora. My moon pool has no legs. Summoned the legs, there you go. They're like, oh shit. Legs, up here. Oh, you can make the purple tablets with diamonds and an ion cube. Interesting. Cool. It's very cool.
partially translated broadcast. Nine new biological subjects designated mode. Hunting, analyzing, sharing subject locations with other agents. What? 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 What does that mean? Am I getting hunted right now? What the fuck? What the fuck is that? Are you kidding me, dude? What is this game? Um... Hmm? Should I be worried? <laughs> what the fuck? What in the world, dude? Okay. Sure. Uh, that's horrifying. Yay. So happy about that. My god. Okay. Not sure what's going on there. Um, let's bring the Sea Glide with us and we'll put a new battery in that. God, this game is terrifying. Okay, let's bring some water with us. Let's ditch these purple tablets. Um, let's ditch these ion cubes. Let's ditch this other poster. Actually, can I just... I should be able to, like... Hang on. Can I put these posters on the wall? Realistically, I think so. Take this... Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't need them in an inventory. Put them on the wall. Hell yeah, natural selection. Let's get this other one. Prawn suit poster. Okay. Let's put this poster. Oh, they're different sizes. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Some posters. Decorate this place. Get that out of my uh, my locker space. Cool. Um, let's put some stuff in these lockers that are all full, because of course they are. Oh yeah, this is my new one. I have to upgrade it. I wonder if you go in there, because I don't need to build anything right now. We're pretty much just going to head to the Aurora, I think. And that should be how we do it. You can go in there. Um, looks good to me. I might need to get some... Might cure some food, because I know I'll be hungry. We'll bring Reginald with us. Oh, no, guess what? I can just bring fresh fish with me forever, and then I can just cook it with my blade. I'll just drop it on the floor and cook it and then eat it. Perfect. <coughs> we'll just do that. That's fine. Um, okay. Let's bind the sea glide. Let's change the battery. Okay, let's access the battery charger. You can charge, lovely. Everything is right in the world. Um, and I think we should go to the Aurora because that seems to be the best course of action. So we'll put all our radiation stuff on. Uh, we've been laser cutting, we've been Propulsion cannoning our way through there, so that looks good. Let's let's go and check it out. Then we've got the sea glide with us. All right, we're heading back to the Aurora. Trying not to get uh, I'm I'm trying not to get too overwhelmed with everything that's happening. So we're just going to try and keep it simple uh, and focus on things like the Aurora for now. Um, I fucking forgot about that. <laughs> my very successful air bladder thingy. No, what is it? Not my air bladder. You know. Pipey Mc... Um, Pipey McAirstein. Alright. To the Aurora. Alright, so... We'll go back to the entrance. Reefbacks are so cool. 
They're hanging out, like, dangerously close to this thing, though. So I wouldn't be surprised if you just start seeing them get all, like, infected looking. good pilot. Now, I'm wondering if there's a easier way because this was a this was a goddamn struggle and a half last time. We should be able to find our way there much smoother this time. I think it's literally right here. Oh god. Yeah, it's right here. Okay. Oh, so I guess we need to Stabilize this place? No, yeah. I don't know, man. We'll figure it out. Uh, we need to stop this place from doing what it's doing. All right, we're back. Um, we're back. That's all I have to say. I'm, I'm still not sure how this is going to go, but we'll figure it out. Um, get some more information. Do our best. Cut some weird uh, head crabs if I need to. But mostly I'm running away from them. At least we've kind of done some things here already, so this little second trip here is a little more efficient. Uh, I'm not going to need my sea glide on the quick bind, so we'll do fire extinguisher. But I have a feeling that there'll be a couple of underwater segments that we'll want to zip through quite quickly, so the sea glide may come in handy. I think there was a point that we reached in this cargo bay where it just felt like a bit of a point of potential no return. I was like, we gotta go get rescued, and then look how that turned out, you know? Okay, so in this area, oh shit. You ever want to avoid taking full damage? Just glue yourself to the wall. Alright, that was lucky. <laughs> um, here is where we stopped. And here we go. A Seamoth Bay. It's down that way. Damaged wiring. Okay, so we've got stuff that we need to repair in here too. Not that this works underwater. Don't question it. Yeah. VR sweet log. I wish that that... That's the only thing I wish was a little bit quieter. <laughs> Uh, just get like get massive sound in your head when you pick up stuff. Loading program Desert Island Drama. Oh, VR Sweet Lock. Three players. Resources. Normal. Spawning players on beach. Player one has been washed away by an unusually high tide. Player two has traded a coconut with player three for ten credits. Player three has planted a coconut. Player is getting hungry. Player three has grown a coconut tree. Player three has eaten a coconut. Player three is no longer hungry. Player 3 has traded a coconut with player 2 for 30 credits. Amazing. Player 2 has eaten a coconut, but is still hungry. Player 3 has traded a coconut with player 2 in exchange for building a tent. Player 3 is sleeping inside their tent. Player 2 is cold. Night falls. A passing ship is offering trading. Player 2 has traded 30 credits for a, for a musket. Player 3 has been shot twice in the head while sleeping. Player 2 wins. Player 2 has died from cold and starvation. I like how the start is just player 1 has been washed away. <laughs> just out straight away. God, that's so good. That is very fun. Um, I will not be scanning that Seamoth fragment for titanium at this time. Ooh. Excuse me? Oh. 
Dude. They just exist. You can just pick them up. I built one. Ah, that's wild. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. We're definitely going to work on this soon, though, for sure. Um, so we can... And it's possible. We've got one magnetite. We just need um, one more. Damn, so you can just find it in the Seamoth bag. God, it's, it's so much more efficient to just come here first. What is that? I can scan it. Bleeder. Get your, get your butt over here. Ow! Get off of me. It's attacking me, the bastard. Yeah, stay still, you... Whoa. Ah! I just... Okay. Get off of me! How do, get it! How do you get it off? God damn it. I can... <laughs> I would not survive. I would be playing one. I'd get washed away immediately. Jesus, it's going to parasite. Bleeder. A simple parasitic organism, a little more complex than the common space tick, but just as dirty. A ductile sac used for collection and digestion of blood drawn from host creatures. The jaw. Rows of teeth and mandibles used to attach to the skin of its victims and behavior. The bleeder's low speed and poor defenses suggest they have evolved primarily as carrion feeders, but they are also prone to target larger living creatures which are less likely to notice and take action against this parasite. Inconvenient and unhygienic, avoid or incapacitate. They suck. The battery uh, gets drained on this one like crazy. Auxiliary mission orders. Mission, search and rescue. Crew of the Mongolian vessel. Oh, shit. Auxiliary mission orders. Search and rescue. Okay. For the Degasi, the Mongolian vessel. Vicinity of planet 4546B. Damn. Mission brief. Mongolian vessel, the Degasi, disappeared almost a decade ago. Carrying it with it, uh, carrying with it a high-ranking Mongolian chief. Since a decade ago, corporate insurance has pur uh, purchased passage aboard the Aurora for Emissary Kassar. As your orders are to make reasonable effort to locate and retrieve the Degasi crew members without compromising the primary mission. Confirming the fate of the crew will aid Altera's diplomatic efforts with the Mongolian councils. Aurora is due to perform a slingshot maneuver. Approximately 13 months post-launch, this will bring the ship within range of the Degasi's last known position. Additional aquatic and all-terrain vehicles have been included in the Aurora's cargo package for this mission. A Degasi crew manifesto has been distributed to senior employees in a separate message. Okay. We got names on these things? It's in a language I cannot understand. Integrating new PDA data. Sweet offer from Huggins to Wilson. You're telling me you've been on this rig more than a year and you never took a ride on the outside? Well, now you've only gone and gotten yourself a friend with the keys to a giant freaking robot suit. We've plain got nothing to do till we get Starside to work on the gate. You want to taste the stars? You've only got to say. My spare prawn suit's got your name on it. You don't know what the power feels like till you've crushed an asteroid with your bare, heavily mechanically augmented hands. Want to play catch? With a passing media, come by cabin number one, codes 1869. Are we about to get a free prawn suit? I don't even have to make it, because that's going to be awesome. And then, I, and then I just have to make... Oh, maybe that's how we get the suit, and then we just make the... We just make the arms. Oh, no, hang on. Mobile vehicle bay, there you go. Prawn suit. Zero, zero out of 20. Zero out of 20. God damn. That's crazy. And then we can make this stuff. Okay. Zero out of 20. Hopefully it's just like in 20 pieces. And it makes more sense that we'd have to make it. Prawn Bay. Okay. 
actually. Let me have one of these too. Let me in, please. Um. Yeah, all right. It looks like it's gonna be. Yeah, it's all destroyed. Black box signature originating on the other side of the hull breach in this room. Okay. Yep. Prawn suit fragment. God damn, twenty of them. Oh, oh no, only, f only four. Why does it say out of twenty? Prawn Suit Mark III. The pressure reactive waterproof nano suit is a range of mechs designed to protect the pilot from extreme environments. The Mark III is the latest iteration and has so far only been rolled out by Altera for their own high value phase gate related operations. The suit is fully insulated from the outside environment. Powerful hydraulic limbs allow for manipulation of objects and powerful traversal of the environment. Rear mounted thrusters provide maneuverability in low gravity environments. A range of modifications are available to facilitate resource extraction and enhanced exploration. The prawn suit has got you covered. Yeah, we had a we had a big old confusion moment with the whole drill arm thing before that finally clicked for me that that's how I get those big old deposits. So I'll be excited to do that. Okay, so we only need four. Why does this say zero out of twenty? Maybe because it's ingredients unknown. I don't know. I don't think too hard about it. Let's just get ourselves some prawns. Oh, we have a radio message. I wonder if I can... S uh, yeah. I'm surprised I'm not being electrocuted, but I'll uh, I'll take it. It looks like I would be electrocuted. Is that a battery or a power cell? I think that's a power cell. It's a power cell. If there's anything down here, like it feels like there would be something, but I don't know if this is just here to waste my time. to leave. I'm gonna leave. Um, Alright, it looks like we've got a ladder to get up there, or I could just do this. Propulsion cannon. Oh. Oh. Stepped on some fire. Boom. New blueprint acquired. We can make that. Okay, cool. Um, aerogel, diamond lead, plastic. Yeah. Okay, nice. Cool. And then to make a drill arm. Oh, cool. Just going to get some time. Crystal and sulfur. No idea. And nickel ore we don't have. Very cool, though. A thermal reactor recharges power cells in hot areas, doesn't stack. Well, that'd be great for that random thermal place 1200 meters below the sea. And then the prawn suit depth module. Oh, this is going to be a journey. Kyanite. Huh? We've also got the cyclops that we can make at one point as well. Look at just how many options we have available to us. Very cool. 
Living quarters. Okay, let's take a look. What do we got in here? Filtered water. Oh, another nutrient block. I'm getting fed. Nice. Oh, dude. Multiple nutrient blocks. What a dream. Nutrient blocks. Saving my life out here. Okay. Finally get rid of this. Okay, that's done. And uh, drop it. Look at all that food in there. If only I could work the vending machine. Single wall shelf. Perfect. That's gonna be brilliant. New blueprint acquired. Keep calm. <laughs> That's great. Got booze and everything in the bar. Integrating new PDA data. Today's menu: Starter, Space Bear, Velute. Uh, since their introduction to the interstellar vacuum in the 21st century, microscopic tardigrades, or space bears, have adapted and flourished where no other life forms have survived. Condensed into a smooth, nutty, protein-rich soup, they are the freshest local ingredient available to travelers on long-haul space flights. The main is a cottage pie or a nutrient block rehydrated minced beef in its own gravy served with a topping of mashed Chinese potato Picked fresh this morning with onboard grow beds and a side of sautéed Chinese potato plant leaves. For the time-conscious consumer, the usual nutrient block options are available. They may be consumed cold or reconstituted on the at the on-site fabricator. Dessert, dried fruits and nuts. Unfortunately, a recent accident in Cargo Bay 3 involving an incorrect application of a repulsion cannon in combination with a modified battery charger resulted in the venting into space of all dehydrated desserts. Fruit and nuts will be the only available dessert for the next 39 weeks. Amazing. All right, uh, I don't think we need anything else in here because I've already kind of scanned everything. Uh, we found these things before and scanned them. Okay. Oh, the nutrient block. <coughs> cabin one. Ah, oh, cabin one was the one eight six nine. Yeah, cabin number one one eight six nine. Cool. Single bed. Let's go. Gonna do some cool base building. We'll build like a multi-purpose room or something. And get a get a bed going, you know? Get a whole thing. A carry-all. Common bag for transporting personal items. We can bind it. Oh, we can just Oh. Cool. That's for the that's for our habitat. Okay. That's uh okay, sure. That'll be great, I guess. Oh, you can... Oh, sh hang on. You can open the storage. Oh! Oh! Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Let's be smart about this. Drop this in the ground. Open it. Put some shit in there. You get more space. God, that's spectacular. And then pick... Right, that makes so much sense. Yes. I thought that we were about to just do a, a super smart inventory hack 
And I was like, oh my god, it only takes up four slots, but you get a total of nine. Okay. <laughs> that is cool, though. Um, you can store your weed in there. Um, I don't think I need that. I'm just going to drop this because I need the inventory space. If I could do it how I was going to do it just then, that would have been perfect. But, you know, what can you, what can you do? Captain's quarters. It's got another one and cabin two, just non, not accessible. Cabin seven. Let's get in here. Integrating new PDA data. Charity is an archaic concept which the realism of today's old Terrans has rendered obsolete. We understand that we are each responsible for ourselves, but the best way to get the most for ourselves is to work together with old Terra. The implication of this reasoning is clear. If someone is in need, they must find a way to be needed. Holterra Arms is a training academy for those that need to be needed. We're not a charity because we don't ask for handouts. We prefer to think of ourselves as a philanthropic beneficence facilitation service promoting synergy between employer and workforce. AA operates on a lottery system. By investing any number of credits, you'll be emerged, will be entered into our prize draw. Larger investments yield higher chances of winning. Your credits will go toward training unskilled colonists in vital tasks such as maintenance and interpersonal skills. The colonists receive this training voluntarily and free of charge on condition of a minimum contract with one of our investors on completion of their training. Perfect. It just works. So many batteries. All of this storage is empty. You'd really think that they'd make some of these cheekily filled with stuff, you know? Start ditching things soon. Huh? Cabin four. Damn. This is a love triangle, but dude, two people got the same photo of a woman. Huh? Scandalous. Relationship contract legal recording. Listen, I know I don't have the right to make demands of you, but I need you to understand that I want to change our arrangement. I hear what you're saying, and I will try to respect it. How would you like to change it? I would like to reduce our contact hours. How much further can we do that? To zero. You're dumping me. I'm changing the terms of our relationship. How is it still a relationship if we don't see each other? It's a relationship of a kind. You have so many expectations. I feel you just want to spend more time with that dumb guy in his dumb robot suit. That's not a feeling. It's a judgment. And I feel hostility in what you're saying. Perhaps your jealousy is a sign that you need to take another look at your business model. Why can't you just be happy for me? I am happy for you. And I'm happy for all the guys in the prawn bay. I'm just not happy for me. This is why I want to change our arrangement. Damn. You know what? Maybe I was not too incorrect there. Two people had the same photo of this woman for a reason. And one of them was Prawn Man. Oh, the plot thickens. There's a third one. There's a third one interested in this woman. God oh, damn. Incredible. How scandalous. Scavenging. Okay. Cabin five. We ain't getting in there, baby. Cool. Alright. Let's go into cabin one. Captain's cabin. We do not have that code. One. I said one, one, eight, six, nine. Responsible autonomous relationships. PDA data. Forward by Jenny Eckhart. For all the good things in life are commodities. We trade love just as we buy and sell stock. We engage in human relationships when there is a fair exchange of value, support, motivation, affection. 
Nothing good is ever free. If every physical good in the Federation came from a single supplier, it would constitute a dangerous monopoly. Personal relationships are the same. It is important for people to get what they need from multiple sources. If a person finds a better source of the goods they require, they are not wronging their original supplier by changing their purchasing arrangements. If one member of a relationship should feel threatened or jealous, they must look at their own business model and ask whether it is performing competitively. There is always room for improvement. Very cold way to look at it. How do we, does that go on our head instead of the... Incompatible with protective environment suits. Why do I have this? Then? Why do I have a blue cap? Huh? I'm full. Arcade gorge toy. Okay, well I need to ditch some things. Then we don't. I can make water very easily, so we'll ditch that. What is this? Arcade gorge toy. Comforting. Perfect. So I guess we can just put it in our base. So this is just some stuff that we can go. Ooh, cool. Like we can put, we can have a wall shelf and put things on the shelf and go, look at this hat that I found. So you can have, you can have a double. Oh no, I've already scanned the double bed in the past. All right. Um, Captain's cabin. Damn, we gotta, we gotta figure that out. I think I may have missed a code somewhere. Um, but at the same time, there should be more for us to probably discover in this place as well. I'm not sure where to go. Alright. <clears throat> Maybe there is a pathway somewhere underneath all of this mess. And that's why that is the way that it is. Um, so I'm just going to retrace my steps a little bit. Look how fast we swim in. <laughs> drive rooms. Oh, hang on, we didn't go to the drive room. We haven't been down here yet. The drive core shielding sustained internal damage during collision. Do not attempt to prepare without appropriate modifications. I'm qualified. Ouch. Okay, now this is this thing that's causing all the issues. Hey, eh? well. <coughs> Let's, I've got a repair tool. I got this. Warning, local radiation at maximum tolerable level. Ooh, okay. Dude, Cyclops engine efficiency module. We're gonna upgrade for the Cyclops. Nice. If only we had one. Um, cool. We didn't need the sea glide after all, and if it's a waste of inventory space, you see what I mean? To be fair, it's my fault because I brought it with me to a place where I really didn't need it. God damn it. Oh, the scanner icon. Oh, there we go. Oh, scanning the breach. Drive core shielding breach. The Aurora's drive core is shielded by a thick metal shell, which breached in multiple locations shortly after the crash. Once breached, it will continue to leak radiation into the surrounding environment until the breaches are sealed. After that point, the radiation in the environment will dissipate over time. This procedure should only be attempted with appropriate radiation protection and a fully charged repair tool. Fully charged. The good thing is we've got equipment with batteries that we can just like take out and put in the repair tool. Oh, for a second I thought it was going to take the whole charge of the thing. <laughs> Further breaches detected. Oh, okay. Okay, we got we got this. Time to repair this shit. Let's go. I'm qualified. And we got spare batteries. Further breaches detected. I'm guessing the further breaches are in here. All right, and radiation is at maximum toleration. So we fix these. Ah! Oh god! Jump scare by a fucking. Get the fuck off of me, you bug bastard! God fucking hell! Jump scare by a parasite. Scarier than the goddamn Leviathan Reaper. Um. So then I should be able to take off my radiation suit at some point. Get the fuck away from me! Ah! Yeah! 
Here's the thing about me. I hate bugs. Containment breach repaired. More than anything in this world. Detected. Eventually we won't have to wear the red suit, right? Do 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 Get the fuck off of me. Handyman repairy man. Handyman repairy man. Ah, oh, it's an infected one. They won't leave me alone. If only I could get the same attention from women. And these fucking parasites. Containment breach repaired. Thank you. We gonna fix it. Handyman, handyman. Woo! We fix the drive core. Let's go. Drive core breach sealed. Radiation levels decreasing. We could have actually done this like really quickly. If you think about it. This music is so nice. It makes me want to like almost like when I start a new game, just immediately come here, get the repair tool, get in here, repair this shit, see what happens, you know? Cool! Radiation will now disperse over time. Very cool. Didn't even need a fully charged thingy. I'm just that good. Let's check out this other side. Yeah. Yeah. No, like, PDA or information about, like, a... Captain's quarters or anything. I think most of the time the fire, you know, blocks pathways, but then other times it's just kind of like there for just, you know, just for mood lighting, you know? So I don't want to waste my fire extinguisher. I just want to put out that mood lighting, you know? Cool. Um... Well, the only thing now that's really kind of sticking out to me would be the... Um, the captain's cabin. <coughs> and I'm not sure. Let's have a look and see. Codes. That's the cargo bay code. Yeah. Oh, actually, hold on. Oh no, because these are also clues. Yeah. Okay. We've been to the Seamoth Bay. This takes us back here. Can I just get up here? Oh, okay, we can just return. Cool. We can just walk back up. Um, yeah, not sure where the captain's thing is, so we may have missed a PDA or something somewhere. So maybe I'll just run around here until I find it. It could even just be at a different location on the ship or just somewhere else entirely. Um, but fixing the drive core was a primary objective, and we did that, so I'm very proud of myself there. It's very cool. Um, again, I love that my inventory is full and we, j we just don't take, we just don't take any sort of, uh, pay any attention to the Seamoth having a storage module. I'm just not used to it, so I haven't used it yet. Um, should probably do that. You know what? Store the sea glide in the Seamoth storage thing. Voila. Done. It just makes almost too much sense. Okay. Maybe there might be somewhere else on the ship. You'd think administration would have your answers. Wondering if there's anywhere else for us to go 
in this place or if that was that was it. It feels like that might have been it. I'm gonna take another peek around, see if we can find this uh, code for the captain's log, and then if not, we'll uh, we'll proceed. I'm a bit concerned about the fact that this place is still kind of making all this noise, but I mean, we only fixed the drive core, so. Having another look around, still can't find anything, so maybe it's just something that'll come to us later or we'll have to discover it. Maybe we'll find it in a life pod or something, who knows. Um, life pod 12 at the ocean bed uh, could be um, a place to uh, a place to start with that. Uh, so we're going to leave. We've repaired the drive core, which is cool. We could have been a little faster with that, and maybe we would have prevented some things. Maybe we were infected, like, really early on, though, and it just isn't showing. So I'm wondering if there was a way to even... You could, like, be, be super efficient, prevent the infection straight away, and then shut down the uh, device, and then have the sunbeam rescue you, maybe. You know? oh, yeah, I forgot. I can just dive off. Imagine just doing that in real life, because I... No. Alright. First things first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at the storage fragment on the... Uh, storage on this Seamoth. Where is it? Where is it? Where's the storage on this thing? We've got the power cell. Ah, oh, there it is. Okay, nice. You can just store some goddamn thing. You can even just store a spare power cell in there, dude. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Decent amount of storage space. Put the sea glide in there. Then by having the sea glide in there, it makes you actually use the storage more because then you take the sea glide out when you go for a little swim. Perfect system. Okay. Oh, damn it. Let's go to my life pod or to the to the moon ball <coughs> real quick. We're going to dump all of our stuff that we've currently got. Um, and then we're going to go to that life pod. Good idea. Uh, we're going to do some more. We will definitely be doing some more cool uh, base building stuff. We'll build some other rooms and get some stuff going on. I should probably, um, with that in mind, build some more solar panels and other reactors and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, see me, I'm a survivalist though. An expert survivalist. I don't be making myself comfortable at home. I be out there putting in work. My hands look like this, so hers can look like this, you know what I mean? While I have a bunch of fish roadkill in the way. I'd be out there working hard, doing my time. To get off of this rock, not to make, not to make a beautiful little cozy house. Will I make a beautiful little cozy house? Probably. Will it get me off of this rock? No, it will not. Welcome aboard, Captain. Pretty good, pretty good, uh, you know, room to start us off there. It's weird that you can't repair this thing. Oh, there you go. I have to aim at this specifically to repair it. I was like, can't repair it while it's docked. There's just something so satisfying about the whole uh, battery thing. I'm just like, having a battery charger? God damn, so good. I'm gonna keep a power cell. Who knows when you'll need a power cell, you know what I mean? Let's replace some batteries, dude. 
I just totally replaced that battery. Oh yeah, I can self-scan. Tell me I have an infection. <gasps> yeah. Bacterial infection in your system is progressing. Detecting skin irritation and immune system response. Further data required to identify bacterial strain. Yeah. Just remember that we can self-scan. Mm. I do be infected. There you go. Imagine my surprise when I found out that I was infected. Okay, let's put some more posters up. Let's let's get this let's get this shit happening immediately. Poster. This is just the poster room. I should have all the prawn ones uh, like with each other, shouldn't shouldn't I? I need to have this cat one. Ah, oh, yes. There's perfect. Yes, that is perfect. We got a radio. The radio can wait. I am hanging up posters right now. Gotta have my prawn poster collection. I've got two land ones. Unbelievable. If you've got doubles, what do you do about that? I want a refund. Cool. Uh, turns out I've got duplicates. Natural selection two. Yeah, I've got two of those as well. No! Alright. Now you just throw it up. You right there, sir? Oh. What do you want to be adopted or something? What is going on here? You wish to be adopted. So bad. Okay. Here. Let me show you what it's like up here. Just hold it outside. You wanted to be up here so bad. You should be able to just throw it away. You don't want to be out here, bud. Be free. <laughs> just, just made it. Made that fish see God for a second. Um, I'm gonna throw these posters away because we've already got two of them. We don't need them. I'm gonna drink some water. I'm gonna heal thyself. stuff away <coughs> so I should just store my spare batteries now um I'm gonna put my actually I think I can put my propulsion cannon in my seamoth as well that's great I can just carry like my larger stuff even like the the rebreather and stuff. Ah, oh, that makes that's that's quite good. That that's quite good, isn't it? Because I've got the radiation one, but then if I ever need to, you know, switch to the rebreather while I'm swimming around, you take out my gear, I go on a little swim, swim. Perfect. And now I've got more inventory space. Um, I don't need Seamoth module Mark One. Uh, so at the moment it's just a, a, a waste of space. I hate that you can't drop stuff in, like, your room. This is my room. I should be able to do whatever the hell I want. Let me drop my stuff on the ground, you know? But okay. Um, maybe what I might do is I will... I should build, like... Oh, I could build a little wall locker, you know, for some... Um, for like just upgrades and stuff. True titanium for a little wall locker. Let's do that. Um, let's get out my titanium. Build a little wall locker. Let's put let's put the wall lockers over here. One of these. 
you can name them, I think. Cool. And then I'm going to put like just shit in here. I've got like shelves for display, which I can do for like the toys. So we'll put the upgrades in here. That I don't need. Put these posters in there for now, just because I've got the space. Um, now, how do I build a shelf? With titanium. I like how easy it is to build kind of the, just the chill stuff. Am I going to make myself a pretty little house soon? Uh, yes. You know what? I just might make myself a pretty little house. Um, but right now, we've got other things to do. But yes, this is very enticing, actually. When you look at, like, oh, you know, gorgeous little wall planter. Yeah, wouldn't that be cool? All right. Um, let's have a little shelf thing going on here. Wall shelves. In the on the corner. It's not exactly on the corner because this game doesn't have goddamn things. This game doesn't have snap building. Unbelievable. Get in there. You are kidding me. Get on that shelf. Oh my god, it's not big enough to... It's not big enough. Oh, I built the shelf for you. God damn it. Okay. Can I rotate this hat? Yep, I can. Okay. I built a whole wall shelf for a fucking hat. Do it, dear. I built a whole shelf for a hat? At least let me put Reginald on the shelf. <laughs> Get on there, Reginald. Get on the shelf. Um, Alright. Sure. There's my one hat. Or I built a whole ass shelf for that. Now if I use this. Perfect. The toy just stays there. It's, it's perfect. Ridiculous. You know what we should do that we haven't done for the longest time? Save the game. This is life pod 7. Coordinates attached. Pod is structurally sound, but the fabricators bust. Requesting assistance. 7 out. 7 out. Signal coordinates corrupted. Of course they are. Approximate transmission origin recorded to data bank. I said all corrupted. Are you just chilling in the bottom of the ocean? Distress signal has been received from life pod 7, but the corrupted coordinates is photographic data. Sunk to 200 meters in an area of low ecological activity. We've been to an area of low ecological activity. Transmission origin approximately one kilometer southwest of the Aurora's stern section. Oh man, I'm not good with boat directions. I'm not good with boat logic. What, are you, what am I, a pirate? Fucking stern? Fucking port? I don't know what that means. Front, back, sideways, we'll figure it out. Um, life pod 7, you'll have to wait your turn because life pod 12, uh, reached out first. So, tough luck. Let's put Reginald away and the habitat builder. Alright, we'll put the fire extinguisher away. Lovely, I'm feeling good about my inventory management. I'm just feeling good in general. Let's get in. Let's go. Alright, and our Seamoth, uh, our Seamoth storage... All systems are... <coughs> our Seamoth storage has uh, the stuff that we need. Let's... Let's go to Life Pod 12. Do not trust me on the roads, because I do not have a license. <laughs> I'd just be, I'd just be living my best life, you know? I'm just vibing. Life pod 12, 250 meters. It's crazy how close life pod 6 was to us.
we'll go on a little journey and hopefully find some uh, magnetite as well, which would be good. We can make enameled glass, we'll make ourselves a plasteel ingot, and then we can take this sea moth down to, I assume, 400 meters will be the next depth. Whoa. What are these? This is new, what are these thingies? Wow. Don't touch it, oh god. Passing 100 meters. Oxygen efficiency decreased. Passing Welcome aboard, Captain. Oxygen that was not what I was meant to do. I want to open the storage thing, please. Because I'm taking this stuff out. Cool. And then I'm equipping this thing. And then we're going to put this in our slot. Oh, there's radiation. Are you kidding me? God damn it, that annoys me. Well, let me just tell you, I cannot wait for when the radiation disperses. Uh, let's scan this bad boy. Ooh, you friend or foe? I think it doesn't even care. Ooh, ooh, it cares. And peel. Smacked me in the face for getting too close. Ah! Amp eel. Gotcha. Worth it. Worth getting shocked. Look at that thing. Amp eel. A powerful inquisitive predator found inhabiting the deeper waters of the reefs and bowl bush colonies. Electrical prongs. Torso mounted prongs generate a powerful electrical current which the amp eel uses to incapacitate its prey. Except for me, because I'm built different. Jaws, a large, flexible jaw studded with sharp teeth. If a faster, stronger, and hungrier predator lives on the reefs, it appears to avoid the MPL. Avoid or incapacitate. Ah, ah. Get away from me. Volcanic activity and several unusual electromagnetic signatures in the region. I found them. Exercise caution when diving deeper. Ah! Jesus. Your information was very delayed there, lady. I should have brought more first aid kits. But we'll be fine. <clears throat> Just don't get attacked. Alright, volcanic activity and electric eels. Let's get out of here for a sec. Ooh. What are these? What are these thingies? So many fish that just go through the <coughs> go through in the environment. Bulb bush. This aquatic species has evolved to grow in deep, sandy environments and to conserve its hydration levels against relatively extreme external temperatures. The root system can fragment the shale rock it grows on to form a deep anchor point, allowing predators to graze but not easily uproot the entire plant. This grazing will tend to dislodge parts of the plant, and each section is capable of growing into a fully formed adult plant explaining the concentrations of bulb bushes in some parts of the world. Edible in small quantities, high water content. Okay. Let me let me get the let me get the old blade out. Yeah. H2O plus 10, food plus 3. Cool. Alright, why am I here again? Life pod 12. Whoa, they get so big! Look at these! Whoa, they're so big. I love how I'm like looking at the small ones. Dude, giant bulb bush. It's a whole separate thing. This vash plant is centuries old. While it dominates the surrounding area, a complex root system below the surface connects it with other bulb bushes in the area. Nutrient flow within this network suggests the giant bulb has adapted to feed the weaker bushes and keep the forest healthy. This is so cool, man. It really has like a lot of beauty to it in times like this. 
I think I've scanned these things before. Nope. Oh, I have not. I have not scanned the bone shark, but I will quickly before I get out of here. Ooh, bone shark. I've seen them. We have we have yet to scan it. A large and powerful predator that lives in small groups and fiercely defends its hunting grounds. We sacrifice in our life for the law, baby. That is the way I do things around here. Thickly armed exoskeleton suggests defensive adaptation either to larger predators or in species aggression. Marked similarity to the segmented exoskeleton of the sand shark, suggesting a relatively recent common ancestor. Large eyeballs, consistent with high light sensitivity, likely for hunting of luminescent prey in low light environments. Generally slow and unresponsive as a means of energy conservation, they will act with uncompromising speed and aggression against any threat to their territory. They may be distracted by light sources, so those flares would be good for them. Fucking <laughs> what? I didn't see you there, Seamoth. <laughs> just, woo, <laughs> just. <laughs> ah! I'm under attack. I'm under attack. Fire the torpedoes that I don't have. I'm under attack by bone sharks. Oh my god, they're more aggressive than the fucking Leviathan Reapers. What the fuck? Jesus. Um, my god. Okay. like whoa everything's so pretty uh, bump into my goddamn ship i the funniest thing is uh the things that have scared me the most in this game is that i'm scaring myself so far uh, god damn fucking <laughs> shit never mind the game said i can still scare you bitch and i will all right get me the fuck out of this bone shark territory get me to this Goddamn life pod. Get me out of here. <laughs> I'm out of here. Guys, I think that this life pod has definitely survived. What do you reckon? What do you think? I reckon it's definitely su survived. The fuck? Shit. Oh, I just realized that I'm attracting them to my location with the flashlight. Because they, they get distracted by light sources. Oh, I'm going to burn my ship alive. That doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. All right. Ugh! Fuck. All right, hang on. This is awful. All right, I'm going to have to take my my Seamoth to a safe distance away, and I'm going to have to do this on my own. All right, ready? Passing 200 meters. We're going. Oxygen efficiency greatly decreased. Doing this. Except we don't want to do the flashlight, because it will let us... It will let us, uh, you know... We'll let them know the location. <gasps> the repulsion cannon, dude. Acquired. The opposite to the propulsion cannon. It's a modification of the base propulsion cannon, which enhances its propulsion effect at the cost of the ability to draw objects closer. It can be fabricated using modification station and is commonly employed in self-defense and as a less than lethal firearm. Cool. Modification station. Modification station. Is that? Yeah. Repulsion cannon, so computer chip magnetite. Cool. Ah. Life pod 12. <clears throat> I'm uh, not really a doctor. I know that's what my ID says, but I never have been. Cheated the medical exams. What does a doctor these days need to know about manually resetting bones? When was the last time a top surgeon actually cut someone open? That's what the robots are for. Doctors these days read diagnoses off of computer readouts. For that, I'm perfectly qualified. But what good is it when I'm not connected to the main network? I'm bleeding? I've got glowing green pustules growing on my hands. I run a self-scan and it tells me I've got skin irritation. The only thing I studied in medical school was how to lie convincingly. What the hell do I know about how to treat an alien disease? I think I'm actually going to die down here. Got them pustules, baby. You got them pustules.
I find it interesting that it's like there's clearly power cells in here, but I guess they're busted. So that's just a life pod that's talking about the infection. <clears throat> Ooh, give me that. Yeah. I've avoided taking damage. We're good. All right, that's life pod twelve. Perfect. Let's go to the approximate location of life pods. Ah, life pod seven. Hello. Jesus. They really don't like me. Wonder why. Um. <laughs> okay. Um. I need clues. Where are my clues at? Life pod seven. <clears throat> okay, two hundred meters. Low ecological activity. It's got some big ass rocks. One kilometer southwest of the stern. I'm gonna look up what a stern is on the boat because it's either the front or the back. I'm gonna take a guess and say that it's gonna be the front <laughs> stern. Oh, boat. Guess what, guys? The stern of a boat is. Oh, here we go. Boat terminology. Shit, the stern is the back. Gotcha. I knew that. I was testing you guys. All right. <clears throat> Southwest of the butt of the ship. Why not just call it the butt of the ship? It makes so much more sense, it saves everyone time. Don't call it the stern, call it the butt. Everybody will know exactly where that is. Immediately. And then just call it the chest of the ship. Everyone will know what that is. Immediately. Alright. So, <clears throat> a kilometer southwest from the stern. So we're going to head in this direction, which is also in the proposed Degasi habitat. And it's about 200 meters deep. So we should be able to knock out two beacons with uh, with one journey here. We'll just fly over this way. To this habitat. Hopefully also find a life pod. This has been a cool episode though, because this has been like less of a resource gathering one and more of an information hunting one, you know? I mean, we've definitely found some cool things in our time here, but we're not like, <coughs> we're not like resource gathering for like materials and stuff, but we definitely will. I do love the changes in, in like the color of the ocean depending on where you are. It's very beautiful. This does feel like it's going to be the same habitat that we've been to already. Just two beacons leading to the same place. We'll check out here. We'll get it knocked. We'll get it ticked off the list. Yeah, it definitely is. Cool. It's the same. But we've fixed the depth module so we can now come down here. Awesome. Alright. And guess what? We can put on the rebreather and also have a better time than we did last time. There we go. Alright, so there should be some things that we've probably missed here on our first trip. Let's take a look around. Ooh! Just get stung immediately and I almost died. Jesus Christ. Hey. All toggles log number two, dilemma. 
Integrating new PDA data. Nice. I think that's one that I needed that I was looking for. Oh no, hang on. I was looking for Degasi voice log number five. That's one that I'm missing. You know what Maida told me today? She wants to build a habitat 500 meters below sea level, more than a kilometer northeast of here. And she needs Bart and I to do it. She's got it into her head that she can save us if she just acts recklessly enough. But I've hauled Star Wars to Neptune, Plasteel to the Federation. <sighs> this family operates nine different mining colonies across the Ariadne Arm. Maida thinks she's better suited to lead. Her contract still says otherwise. But I just cannot damn well tell whether it's the stupidest idea I ever heard. Or my only hope. I turned 80 years old last week. I thought I had another 80 in me, but marooned on this planet, there's no swapping out of my liver when the old one fails. Here, I'm mortal. And Maida is useful. So... It's my responsibility to make a decision. Return to the island and hope whatever not that the Ghazi out of the sky won't do the same to the rescue ship. Or take us deeper in search of answers. And all the while be hoping old age gets me before the sea monsters do. I'll give Maida just one thing. She was right about these caves. There's enough lithium there to fabricate a hundred tons of plasteel. Enough for a damn fleet of Cyclops submarines. There was nothing anyone could have done to avoid crashing here. But I was right to order the detour. If we get off this planet, they'll be talking about the Torgel share price on the other side of the Federation. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big meaty voice log right there. There's some good stuff. So 500 meters down they're talking about. And and a lot of lithium and for cyclops submarines aha the Degasi voice log number five there it is son there is always a pecking order and in our world money Welcome makes a hierarchy Captain. i pay made a fraction of what i pay you and you a fraction of what i pay me if money makes the hierarchy why is Marguerite making the decisions? We need her. We let her think what she likes, so long as she does what she's told. What if she doesn't? <laughs> For enough money, she will. People always do. What the fuck is going on? What are you? What the fuck? Awesome. Um, uh? Didn't fucking, didn't terrify me at all. What the, f what the hell is going on in this game? Am I hallucinating because of the infection? Am I being contacted by shit? Damn, they got they had diamonds down here the whole time. Shit. Oh, damn. I've been robbing myself of getting diamonds because I've I fucked up on my first trip here so badly. And now look how much easier this trip is here. <gasps> yes. Dude, we can make the depth module. Magnetite. Essential for advanced fabrication. It's an iron oxide valued for its magnetic potential amongst other qualities. It is used in many Federation technologies, including sonar and torpedo systems. <clears throat> Don't make me fucking run away, because I will. Yeah. me the protection of my seamoth. I'll just ram into it. What is that? Nothing. Ooh, 
There's some stuff. There's some stuff. Battery. That's fine. Ooh, that's new. I I I I Catman. That's yep. That's an I. That's an I I. All right. An extreme evolutionary adaption where 90% of the life form's body mass is dedicated to the ocular cavity. Oversized eyeball. Deep set rings in the lens suggest specialization for identifying its predators in low light environments uh, long before they come into attack range. And underdeveloped fins, incapable of fast movement, this species is vulnerable to agile predators at close range. Shark species may have evolved hunting techniques to close on the eye eye unseen from above, below, or behind. This organism and the common peepa share a common evolutionary ancestor. While the eye eye has sacrificed maneuverability, it shares and enhances its cousin's powerful eyesight. The ancestral alpha peepa may have been one of the first life forms on 4546B to develop eyesight many millions of years ago. And it do be edible. <coughs> Incredible. Incredibly edible. Damn, they really yell at you, don't they? Oh, dude, it's just sitting here on the goddamn floor, and there's so many of it. Oh, God, so many pieces. We could have had this ages ago. What is the thing, right? Hindsight, right? And now we know. And now we know. Forward, uh, papyrus. Ooh. The function of the distinctive curved leaves on this aquatic plant is not immediately clear. It is possible the leaves unfurl in low light conditions or that they are designed to channel water currents through the main body of the plant, thus enhancing nutrient take up. Well, now I've just got a bunch, dude. No complaints there. I'm gonna need this for our advanced stuff. More diamonds would be nice though, because I got some stuff that I need diamonds for. hot down here. This is where I would need my, my prawn suit. Ooh. This is so cool. When we start getting to this area and this kind of stuff, I'm just like, this is amazing. We'll be able to drill some really high quality materials once we get that prawn thing filled out. There's a, so much, so many gold. So many gold deposits. Nice. Alright, we've got enough diamonds for the prawn suit. That's nice. <coughs> I cannot believe I'm like magnetite. And it's it's just just chilling on the ground. I don't even have to mine for it. In outcrops. Oh yeah, shit. Oh god. I forgot about my oxygen. I'm so much further away. I'm so much further away than I thought. Um, goddamn. Dunno. Dunno. <laughs> just. I still had the air bladder just in case. But um I thought that we were good. And we were good. Alright, we've got um magnetite, we've got diamonds, we can start making some other things. I think we've got the materials in storage for the aerogel. 
Uh, potentially the plasteel ingots. I think we can make the enameled glass. So with that in mind, let's get out of this cave system. I'm happy that we've come back to this base to get those missing voice logs. And it, and it was the same base. And then we'll get out of here now. This was a much better expedition than the first time coming down here. And while we're also, oh god, while we're also around here, um, let me repair this bad boy real quick. While we're around here, I'm going to try and find life pod 7. <coughs> I apologize for the coughing this episode. I thought that I was uh, I was fine and I and I am for the most part. I just been doing a lot of talking this episode so it's just making me want to cough. But I'm I'm fine. I'm good. It's just that lingering cough when you have recovered from a cold but you're like Ugh. So it's all chill. No stress. Okay, so let's ascend real quick just to see where the ship is. There. There's the stern of the ship. And now from there, we're going to go southwest about a kilometer or so. Oh, and now we've got our new proposed Degasi habitat, which is 500 meters down. There it is. And we're going to need to get, like, we're going to need to do some stuff for that before we can get down there. But it's cool to follow the journey. The fuck was that? What did I hit that, like, span me around? Um, it's cool to see the, um, the, 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 the Gassi journey. I hit something that just like span me around, which is wild. Whoa, look at these. Can you fuck and leave me alone? Fucking bone shark motherfuckers. I'm trying to engage in the beauty of this world. God damn it. Look at these anchor pods. I'm trying to absorb information in this beautiful place. These unusual flora specimens have been encountered exclusively on the deep reefs. They consist of a large spherical gas-filled membrane anchored to the sea floor by its root system. At these depths, it is unlikely this structure is designed to enhance access to sunlight, but rather the pod's ability to propagate. Once the pods attain sufficient height, they burst releasing spores which catch the currents and disperse around the local area. Interesting. Can't you guys be attracted to the natural bioluminescence of this ship and leave me out of it? Okay. Now... I don't know how far out we've gone from the ship specifically, but we need to be like 200 meters down and I need to look for like weird sunken rocks. So, so we're going to go 200 down and then from there we should be able to see for maybe for, oh, hang on. We got some wreckage down here. Now from here, 200 down, we should be able to see if we find some familiar looking environment to that photo. This is kind of fucking terrifying though. It's just so... We're only 200 meters down. I'm just going to go straight up real quick. 
I wonder how far away we are from um, the ship. Probably not very far. Definitely not a kilometer away. Southwest. Right. We're just gonna we're gonna continue to go southwest from the stern. Two hundred meters. We're just searching for life pod seven. We'll be sure to come back to this area for the proposed Degasi habitat. We're just going out into the unknown. Okay. Try and stay around 200 meters. See anything? I ain't see shit. If we keep going, eventually we'll find something. <laughs> All right, I'm like 1,600 meters away from the life pod. Maybe if it's a daytime, this will stand out more. This approximate location does not help. I'm looking for that. 200 meters, low ecological activity. One kilometer southwest. Approximately one kilometer southwest. Ah, but if it's 200 meters down, there'd be so much more land. Like, not land, but surface for it to be on. Like, I love how, like, like we're, we're gonna find this no matter what. This is what we're doing. We're finding this fucking thing. <laughs> Meanwhile, our chances of finding it are probably quite slim. We might have to, we might have to continue the journey for it next time. Let's see what we can find. Cyclops fire suppression sample analyzer. Sample analyzer non functional. Non functional laboratory equipment. Why would I want it if it's non functional? Microscope. Non-functional. Yes. Let me take that with me. Light stick fragment. Okay. A light stick. How'd you get in here? Little guy. Follow me in here. I guess the life pods can be seen quite easy when you are approaching them, and I guess if you're looking at them the right way. I'm wondering if it would be near wreckage, you know, like this. Have I opened this before? I haven't been out this way before. This has been open though. Have I been out here? Maybe I have. Are those always closed whenever you find them? <gasps> Ooh, hang on. Now that it's goddamn daytime, I have a bit more of an idea about where we could be. Let's 
trying to look for a similar environment. scan that. As if I can't scan whatever that is. Weird stuff. Whenever you see weird things, you can't scan it, you're like, what the hell? Retreat into the cave. Use this, use this time to quickly heal my thing while I'm being hunted by wizard fish. shrooms in here. Ooh. Oh man, it just keeps going. Deep cave network. I see some rubies. We got a radio message that's come through and we're approaching our maximum depth. just keeps going down. That's... That's terrifying. I put the sea glide away. <laughs> it is so easy to get sidetracked in this game. I mean, so you're just like, I'm just gonna go here. And then, meanwhile, yep, I'm just going to go here, don't mind me. Looks like we've hit the bottom of the cave system. Whoa. What the fuck are those? Whoa, the noises. Whoa. Whoa. Sea treader. We got the deep sea elephants, baby. Sea Treader Leviathan, a vast bipedal leviathan which roams the reefs in herds, grazing the sea floor. Antenna on the creature's head can detect a range of scents, helping the sea treaders to find fresh grazing pastures, avoid the path of large predators, and sense chemical si signals from others of their kind. Carapace, thick armor, protects the creature from attack by all but the largest of carnivores. Two legs extend from the rear. An elongated snout, used to siphon up plant material from the seafloor and maintain balance. Behavior. Large herds would decimate the flora of a single area, thus encouraging the sea trader's migratory behavior. Families keep their young towards the center of the herd, and parents will lash out at overly curious interlopers in search of an easy meal. Sea trader herds may unearth mineral deposits as they churn up the sand. That's awesome. Some goddamn, goddamn deep sea elephants. They be, they be giving us minerals, dude. That's so cool. I don't have. Ooh, I don't have water. I don't have water. I don't have water. But. 
Goddamn, you wanna come down here, get yourself some goddamn minerals? You can! Oh my god! It's a dream down here, they just aren't- So if you ever just wanna come and get some, uh, shale outcrop materials, step no further, dude! What is that? <laughs> what is that? Goddamn alien shit! All right, we're getting out of here. Okay, that was that was magical. That was so cool. Okay. Oh, hang on. Am I going? Oh shit! I gotta go the right way. I'm getting lost. So you can they can just unearth mineral deposits. We can just come back here when we run out of. Uh Shale outcrops. Am I going to remember where this place is? Fuck no. Should I have had a beacon on me? Yep. Am I going to learn my lesson? Probably not. There's a bunch of rubies down here. Uh, I don't know how to mark this place for, for just like next time, but goddamn. It's so cool when you're in going in search of something and then something happens and you end up just like having a magical discovery like that. That's awesome. All thanks to the wizard fish pushing us into a random cave, dude. Uh, now I need to get out of here. Alright, we'll have to... Yeah, we'll have to find this place again. Um, let's see how that goes. God, they're just, they're just hanging out waiting for me. <laughs> if we could find the life pod, and if the life pod was near here, that would be the best. Damage to plant life on the sea floor suggests this may be the migration path of a huge bottom dwelling life form. Hey, I discovered that. That's awesome. Alright, just continues to get deeper from here. I think we're definitely well away from a, th uh, a thousand kilometers from where this life pod could be. So we haven't done a good job. We've failed in our mission. But what we have done is found a lot of cool stuff. And I really need to maybe find some bladder fish or something. Fluid intake immediately. Yeah. Warning. Maximum depth reached. Hull damage imminent. Send. Um. Shit. I can't just get H2O from it normally. Um, I should have brought more water with me. Alright, this is, um, we're in trouble. We're heading back to the life pod now because this is all we've got. I didn't bring enough water with me because I'm silly. We're heading back. Rookie, rookie survival mistakes right there. We'll head back to the, to this place, to the life pod, and then we'll sort of acknowledge the fact that if we go southwest for so long, we'll find cool stuff. Um, we should also take more beacons with us in future. That would definitely, uh, that would definitely be useful. I think this might be the area where the life pod is. It feels like it could be around this place. Some really cool discoveries this episode, but we're going to ingest some water and we're going to bring this episode of Subnautica to a close because it's been a long one. And it's been a good one. There's been a lot of cool things happening. We're getting more and more familiar with, with certain things and, and having a good time. We've learned some things about ourselves and the infection and how we're infected and how we have no idea how to deal with that, but we will eventually. Uh, the Mapo 1 Seamoth is uh, 
is holding strong. I need to repair it after I drink some water because we're kind of desperate for that at the moment. Get back to the life, bud. All we know is we have to build some stuff. Find some stuff to build some stuff. To build some more stuff. To discover some things. To probably then build some more stuff. And um, it's just a great little loop. Cutting it dangerously close here. <laughs> Just had to go on a roadkill spree before I land. Um, goddamn. I'm on one. Ingest water. Perfect. Vital signs stabilizing. This is Altera HQ. This may be your only communications window. Can't send a rescue ship all the way out there, so Aurora, you're just gonna have to meet us halfway. We've uploaded blueprints to the ship's We're computer. Going to sandwich run, you in? <laughs> Black box data shows the high security terminal in the captain's quarters is still functional. Becky's but, leaving like in five minutes. All right, well, tell Becky I'll just take the the regular. The regular. Yeah, she'll know what I mean. The code should Maybe be. She doesn't. Just tell her the regular, dude. Okay. The if code. I say regular, she's like, "What's the regular?" I can come all the way back up here. The code should be two six seven nine. The regular's just a ham and cheese. <laughs> okay, would you just say ham and cheese? Ham and cheese. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, they just don't care, dude. They're just like, "Ah, uh, we can't get you. You're gonna have to come halfway." Okay. Back to the Aurora for the captain's quarters. We have the code now. Wonderful. Uh, and that is where we're gonna bring our episode to a close. 2679. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Subnautica. It has been a incredible ride as usual. Next time, we'll go get that black box data in the captain's quarters with that code because that just became a very pressing matter. Um, and then we'll look into other things that we can do as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.